Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today what I want to talk about are the very top luxury watches from Germany. And the first one I'm going to start with is Marco Lang. Now Marco Lang is sort of in the his second edition and we'll see why in a, in a second. Uh, this watch is called the Fighter this, and forgive my German pronunciation, but that's as close as I can come. Uh, this watch is really amazing. Now, it looks like there's two watches, but there there's actually one watch, and it has, what you can do with it, you can just flip it over. And it, it's really a cool watch. Uh, three hertz, a caliber uh, ML01, ML for Marco Lang. Uh, and it's, it's just, it's really remarkable. Uh, one of the things I've always liked about Marco Lang's uh, watches is that on top of the balance uh, shaft, there's a diamond. But he says it's an old German tradition and it's one I really like. Uh, I have one of his watches. This is called the Frederick II. And uh, Friedrich too, probably how to pronounce it. And it's got its little diamond on top of that too. And th the other thing about Marco Wang's work is that he, the emphasis on the movement. And the the person who owns a Marco Wang watch uh, can see more of the movement than your your typical your typical watch. I mean, they're 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 really they the narrow bridges and reveals all of the the gear train and the rest of it. And when you look at it, it just, it's just fun to look at. And then if you get tired of that, you can flip it over and just look at it as a regular watch. Now, I mentioned that the Marco Lang watches was sort of act two. And Marco Lang and another guy named Hein I uh, started a watch company in uh, Dresden, Germany. He was it must about almost 20 years ago. And um, after the first year, Hein left. All right, he went back to work up in uh, thinking Glashütte. And so anyway, all for the for the period of from oh around 2000 or so up to 2018, uh, Lang and Hein was really Marco Lang. And the thing that was remarkable about uh, Lang and Heim was that all of the movements that Marco Lang developed. Some of these companies will go for years using somebody else's movement and finally they'll get and they'll have one. They'll use it in most of their watches. At, uh, what Marco Lang did is that he had almost a different movement for every watch because each watch had some kind of unique feature or characteristic to it. Uh, the Georg up in the upper left up there, the caliber 9 1X uh, to the right of it is is an example where you can just see everything. Uh, the entire uh, gear train is, each one is on a, on a separate little finger uh, bridge, just amazing. He also did some amazing things with the dials. Uh, the one, uh, the blue dial is called the uh, Champlevé. And this dial is done with uh, enamel, uh, some kind of enameling, and then it's cleaned off. And so the, b b beneath it, the silver of the, of the metal shows up. And so you have this one that's full of stars and everything. Really, I mean, that just, that's one of the levels of talent that he has. Uh, the Conrad is a, has a rem, uh, Remontois Egalité in it, which is something that very few uh, <laughs> watchmakers have. And uh, the Albert is a, um, a Rattrapont. There's, these are just a few of the watches that Langenheim, and Langenheim, I'm not sure what happened, but uh, Marco left and it's still been going on. It's uh, being run by some other people uh, who know about watches. So this is, these watches, again, they, they're fairly pricey, uh, but they're wonderful watches. This, this is why very much of an elite watch. Now, 
this next one, Alanga Unsonda, is is one that most people, when they think of top-notch uh, German watch companies, this is the one they think of. Uh, often compared to, with uh, Patek Philippe, for example, or one of the other top uh, Swiss watchmakers. Uh, they're owned by the Richemont Group. They're part of that, and but they 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 have a reputation for making very high quality movements, and they again uh, they're they're very expensive. Uh, the Cabaret Tourbillon. Uh, hand works gun sorry uh on the left there is a tourbillon in a rectangular shape uh case and it's just one of the things they do by the way too i should have mentioned it but at langenheim number of the langenheim also have tourbillons this was one of the things that marco wine could do with like everything else uh, some of the other ones that they have, I just have a couple here. Uh, the Richard Lang Perpetual Calendar, uh, the Saxonia Datagraph Up Down Lumen. The, the, the Saxonia Datagraph was, uh, what was it? Uh, Philippe Dufour owns one. And he said he thinks it's the finest watch, the finest what he called serial produced watch in the world. Now, this is coming from a Swiss, a very good Swiss watchmaker, and uh, he's very, very high on uh, a lot of the German watches. He did also, Philip DeFour mentioned that he thought that the best watches under 10,000 were another German company called Nomos. Uh, down there on the, on the bottom, you can see the, uh, the swan neck regulator that they have, and then the engraving and then the weights on the balance, really just top-notch, beautiful work. Uh, they have some simpler ones too, and I think I think maybe their smaller Saxonia goes for around 15,000, but that's about as low as you're gonna find, 15,000 euro. Okay, now this next company is uh, Moritz Grossmann, and this is run by, uh, the CEO is a woman named uh, Christine Hutter. And uh, what she did, she comes from a, a watchmaking family and she bought the rights to Moritz Grossmann. And her, her goal was to make high quality watches that reflected the kind of standards and quality that Moritz Grossmann had when he was making them himself. Uh, one of the German uh, features for, that was characteristic of uh, Grossmann's watches was the two-third plate. And so uh, you have two-thirds of the plate covering most of the movement, mainly the uh, the barrel and the winding gear and so forth. Uh, but you can really have a very good view of the balance and the balance cock with, and there you'll find this really wonderful engraving. And uh, these these watches again they, they're fairly dear in terms of price, uh, but uh, they have a lot of different ones. One of the one of the things they have I don't think it's pictured here is one uh, the, one of the versions of the Tefnut is has the bar lugs and the they come straight up, but the top bar lug uh, used for winding the watch. There's very cool things that uh, that they have now. Um, this next one is one that you might compare with Gervais Lecoutre or the, one of the sort of middle to high range uh, Swiss watch companies, uh, Gerard Perrigo, for example. Now, the, the range here, though, I think is much, much longer. I mean, you have at the very top uh, there's one called the Alfred uh, Hewig Tour Beyond 1920, uh, three hertz. This one, this one goes for $121,800. So I mean, this is like <laughs> stratosphere. And but some of the others, you get down, you start very quickly. You can find some great watches uh, from Glasshuda Original for 
in the more affordable range. All right, I'm not, they're, none of them are cheap, but they're, they're not quite as ethereal. Uh, one I like a lot uh, is the uh, Pano Matic, Panomatic Inverse. And what they have is basically you can you can see the the balance and the uh, the balance bridge holding everything up, and it's they just flipped it around so you could see it from the front. I like that a lot. But then at the same time, they have a, a dial and so forth that you can see the watch. Twelve thousand seven hundred now for a watch, a really super high level. Uh, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, that's why I compared them to uh, Gerard Perigo and uh, Zaza Lacoutre. They have some very reasonably priced ones as well as some extremely high priced. Most of the ones here uh, are the metal versions, the uh, stainless steel, but the gold, they have gold and platinum and so forth that are much more expensive. Uh, another one I like is called the CQ, which is their sports watch, the diver watch, 4 hertz, and that, that one is 12,500. And uh, they're, they're real, they're not bargain, but they're well-made uh, watches that are, relatively speaking, very economical. Uh, this is a 39 millimeters, another one that's more expensive, I think it's 42 millimeter, but the 39 millimeter 60s in stainless steel, $6,400, which I think is a, you know, pretty good buy. It's a very popular model because of that. Now, they also have what one of the categories they simply call feminine watches. And these are styles more for women. Uh, for example, a Panamatic Luna, they also have a men's version, but in the, in the women's version, they use a powder blue with the diamonds and uh, diamond indexes around the, the main dial. And, and around the bezel. So, you know, this is for, you have, you, you do have more of a, a balanced feature. The interesting thing too about this particular feminine one is 3940 uh, millimeters, you got a good size watch. It's not hard to read those little bitty women's watches that they used to have. I don't know how they're possible to read the things uh, <laughs> without, without a loop. Uh, but this one is a nice, good size one, good looking watch. Now, the the final thing I want to look at are the independent German watchmakers. Now, these are some of the smaller ones, and I, you might even consider now as we started with Marco Lang as an independent. Uh, but these are some of the some of the either lesser known or newer ones. Uh, one of the newer ones I think to keep an eye on is Stefan uh, Kadoki. Uh, his this particular watch uh, won the Grand Prix award for it's called the uh, Aiguille de, uh, Petite Aiguille uh, and it's a beautiful beautiful little watch now his prices have been going up <laughs> so his popularity uh, is becoming more and more recognized that's his movement down there beneath it uh, another guy that very few people seem to know about is Christian Klings and his watches are nothing short of amazing beautiful watches that he has and um, he has one called, he has a, a detent, a mosquito detent sort of a thing that he developed for the, um, uh, in the, uh, in the escapement and the balance. Now, uh, finally is Rolf Lang. Now, Rolf Lang is, is so amazing. He, one of the, um, oh, Harrison, John Harrison, way back when, uh, developed a chronograph for navigating the seas. And it's just, it was this beautiful thing and very few have replicated it. Uh, Rolf Lang is one. Uh, Rolf has worked at some of the top uh, watchmaking companies at uh, H. Moser. He was at Tutima. Tutima, I believe he created a uh, minute repeater for them. Just just everything. Uh, I visited Rolf in, uh, in Dresden, uh, outside of Dresden, a few years ago, a couple of years ago, and his stuff was just absolutely amazing. He, he showed me this, had some kind of metal that he had. It looked like it 
you know, just been chopped up and something. So I'll take this and I carved out some watch part. I mean, everything, all of these guys make their own movements. And Rolf Lang is, is certainly a master of it. Uh, he also worked for Alanga, uh, C. T. Tima, H. Moser. Uh, and now I'm not sure. I think one of the things that Rolf Lang is doing now is is training young uh, watchmakers. Uh, he did that at, I think it was at Tutema, possibly also at Alanga uh, and H. Moser, but he's for, sort of the new breed of uh, German watchmakers. Now, one of the interesting things about some of the best watchmakers and the best watches are coming out of Dresden. Uh, all three of these are from Dresden, and so is uh, Marco Lang. Uh, most of the others are from Glashuda, but there's some really excellent uh, watchmakers throughout Germany. Dresden, though, I think is sort of the center for the, the ones that sparkle. Let me know what you think. I know you're going to have some. You say, well, how come you didn't include this? And you're probably right. So let me know what it is. And uh, this is an opportunity to subscribe if you'd like. Until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of watch collection.